Hey guys, welcome back to the 35th part in this Python series for beginners and in this one we're going to carry on working with the application using JSON like we have been in the last couple of videos so let's just go ahead and get straight back into it so this is the script that we last finished off with in the last video and it produces this, this response here so I can go ahead and run it again if I want to but if you remember the example that I was trying to copy was repeating every single time asking the user for an input so at the moment it just searches for address equals LHR and then returns a response for that and then it gets the London Heathrow Airport address but what if we want to enter anything rather than just that specific one thing so that's what we're going to do in this video so to do the repetition thing first I'm going to wrap it all inside a while loop so I'm just going to say while true so of course it's always going to be true so it's going to repeat indefinitely until we tell it to quit and I can show you how to do that a little bit later on but for now the input that you want the user to input is going to be this address variable so to do that I'm just going to say address is equal to the user input and then I'm going to say whatever I want the program to say to prompt them to enter an input so I'm just going to say address so that should allow the user to enter a value into the address variable and of course we don't need this bit anymore uh, because we've already got that so let's go ahead and run it and now you can see it asks us for an address and then it'll pause there until we've entered something and it's going to carry on so we could do San Jose for example I showed you this example in a previous video and it gave us that address so that's good, so that now works. But what if we did something like uh, gobbledygook, which doesn't return uh, a, re a result from the Google API? Well, it's gonna say zero results, so we know that uh, this bit works, where it says status. So it's still got the status, which is correct, because there aren't any results, but we've got a problem here, because we're asking, uh, we're asking the JSON data for data that it doesn't have. So this response in this case is just going to say invalid response. There's there's no data essentially. There's no uh, key called results, or if there is, it's going to be blank. So what I'm going to do to solve this problem is I'm going to say so we've got the J JSON status here. I'm going to take all this and I'm going to put it inside an if statement. So I'm going to say if JSON status is equal or is equivalent to sorry is equivalent to okay because remember when it's okay it means that we've got the valid JSON data back and if it says zero results it means okay we've got a problem we haven't got any data to show the user but at that point we don't want a big red error because that's not very user friendly so instead we can do this and that should work a little bit better so we could do San Jose again that gets our results same as last time or we could just do lots of gobbledygook and this time it doesn't break it still asks us for another input and it just says zero results and then it carries on so that's much better but if you notice now we haven't really got a way of quitting the application and we could type quit but that doesn't really do anything uh, or Q you might think that's a logical thing but you still just get an address based on your search query uh, so in that case we don't really want that so if we're gonna say if the user enters Q or quit then we want the program to just stop there so to do that I'm gonna use a new keyword in Python called break so what break does is uh, well I'm gonna show you so after the user input we're gonna say if uh, if the user enters Q or the, the user enters quit so if address is equivalent to quit or address is equivalent to Q just lowercase Q like that so they're the two things that the user can enter to quit the program uh, we, we're just going to say break and what that should do is quit the program if that's entered so I can do Q and the program quits and just to check the other one we could do quit and now the program quits as opposed to returning this response which we didn't want because we wanted the program to quit when we entered that uh, if you're wondering why quit is purple as well it is technically a keyword but to force the program to quit you'd have to write 
quit with the parentheses on it on the end of it so it would call the built-in function in Python. So you could do that and then it would actually quit the entire program, but we don't want to do that. So now we're almost done with this entire program. What I want to show you is how you can iterate through multiple parts of the JSON data and extract multiple bits of information rather than just one at a time. So to do that we're going to use a quick for loop and then we're going to move on to something else in the next video called try accept. So Let's go and look at the JSON data again, and for this one I want to extract the long name of all of the data in this address components list. So you can see we've got results, which is uh, the key in the main JSON dictionary, and then we've got the, the dictionary inside the list again, and then we've got address components. And if you remember in the last video I said that this is a list object, so now what we want to do is iterate through that list object and extract the long name which contains some value and extract all that out and print it out. So to do that I'm going to add a for loop inside this if statement. So if you're not too familiar with being able to nest things in programming what it just means is being able to put a for loop inside an if statement or an if statement inside a for loop or an if and a for loop inside uh, a while loop like we're doing here. Uh, it all works just fine, just natively in Python. You don't have to do anything special. It just works really, really nicely, which is a really powerful feature of the language. So I'm just going to go and add a for loop here. And I'm going to say for each, for each element, so each of these JSON things in address components, I want to iterate through and do something. So to do that I need to find the address components list object out of the JSON. So it's going to be in the JSON data and it's going to be in the results because that is the key of the list object in the main JSON dictionary and then it's going to be all the elements. So it's going to look at results and then it's going to say this dictionary here and then I want address components. So that would be the first the first element in the list and then the key of address components. So I'm going to do zero here and then I'm going to do address components. make sure you do spell it right because if you don't then it's not going to work. Uh, it's very very explicit in that sense. So now what I'm going to do is just print each. So what that should do in theory is find the key of address components which has this list, list object, iterate through each of these uh, little things here and then so each of these dictionary objects so it's a list that contains dictionary objects so and then I want to extract the long name from that so to do that I still need to add something here so each is going to take the value of one of these little dictionaries here so I still need to use the key long name so I should be able to do long name here so the key of the little dictionary where the data is actually stored long name equals in this case Heathrow Airport then it should iterate through all the long names here going down the JSON so let's try that and then hopefully we'll get an output somewhat similar to what I showed you in the first video so I'm just going to do LHR and then we get the output exactly as we wanted so the only other thing that we're missing from the example was the other blank line which was just after this API status OK. So that's here. So I'm just going to add a little print statement here. I could also in fact do uh, just add a string like this with the backslash n which if you remember I, I mentioned is the special character in Python for a new line. So we could do that as well enter the same search and then it says it gives us a blank line here after API status OK. So that's the entire program that I was going to show you which is I think pretty cool because it allows you to get a full address based 
on a single search query, it could be a postcode, a zip code, it could be the first line of your address, or it could be, you know, just a town or a city or something like that, if you want to just try it out with, you know, some of the places near you, for example. So, I think that's really cool, but in the next one I thought we'd talk about something completely different, because I've rambled on about this program for probably three videos now, so in the next one we're going to be talking about the try and accept keywords in Python and how that can be very, very useful, especially if you don't know if a line of code is going to blow up on you and throw an error, or if it's not.